So now that we've got SAP Business One installed on our SQL Server machine, we're going to go through the process of installing Business One on our Terminal Server virtual machine. Now one thing we need to do before we go through that process is on our SQL Server we just need to go in and open up a couple of firewall ports um, to allow the client to be able to communicate successfully with SQL Server and also the licensed server uh, that is part of SAP Business One. So how do we do that? Let's run through that process really quickly. On the SQL Server machine, I'm gonna go in and open my um, network and sharing center. Then we're gonna go into Windows Firewall. We're gonna go in and we're gonna to go to our advanced settings. Give that a couple of seconds to open up. And then if we look at our inbound rules, I'm gonna create a new rule. Now what I'm able to do is I can create one rule that uh, covers all the ports that we need to open. So I'm gonna choose um, a port based rule. And the specific local ports that I'm gonna um, open up, obviously I need port 30,000 for um, the license service plus 30,001. So we'll put 30,001. And then I also want to open up port 1433, which is the firewall port that SQL Server communicates on. So I'm going to add 1433 um, to that particular um, to that particular rule. So then I'll say next, and I'll allow the connection. Now, which network types do I want these rules to apply on? I'm going to keep that it selected on all of them whether the network is domain private or public. Now, most of the time it should always be a domain network anyway. And then I'm gonna call this my SAP Business One Server Rule. And then it's always a good idea to document this why you've created it. This rule opens the required ports for SAP Business One. All right, and then we'll say finish. And you can now see there's our SAP Business One server rule. That rule kicks in straight away. So we're now done there and we're gonna go across now to our terminal server. So here's our terminal server. I've logged on as the administrator. Now the first thing I wanna do is I want to go and map a local drive to the installation source on the SQL Server. So when I've done the SAP Business One Server install, it installs all the client files into a directory on the SQL Server and then shares that out. So if I go up here and I put in slash slash OEC SQL Server, which is the name of my SQL Server, and press enter, you can see there's my B1 share. So I'm gonna right click on that and I'm gonna choose map a network drive. I'm gonna map drive S, which is what I use all the time. Then I wanna reconnect this at log on. And I'll say finish, and that's now done. So I've got my S drive that's uh, ready for me to execute the installation routine from. So then how do I install an application on terminal server or remote desktop services? Well, I click on start, go into control panel, and then I run this special process, install application on remote desktop server. So I'll select that. It's gonna run with administrator privileges, so it's gonna ask me for permission to do that. So now it kicks off a wizard. Uh, I choose to browse out onto my S drive, into my client folder, and there is my setup program. So I'm gonna choose that, and then I'll say next. Now first thing, it's gonna install my um, Visual C++ runtime. Then it's gonna install the DI API, uh, the SAP Business One client, the Crystal Reports components, uh, and anything else that's required. So I'll say next, put in my username. And I'll say next, accept all the defaults here for the installation locations. And then I'm gonna let the installation run. So now the license server name I need to put in is OEC SQL Server. And it's port 30,000, so that's fine. 
that's going to test that, tested it successfully and the DI API installation goes ahead. This is a very, very quick component of the installation. And then the install program will automatically trigger the next stage of the installation for us. So you can see the client setup now goes ahead. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to pause it for a second whilst the installation runs through uh, because you obviously don't want to watch the installation process running. You'll be able to see that on your own system as you go through the process yourself. So now the installation has finished. So you can see I can click on finish. It's just going to update a couple of values in the registry. And again, this is part of the reason why we're running this special install process on terminal services because each user that logs on has their own separate copy of some of those registry settings. So by running this special process, each time a different user logs on for the very first time, it copies all of those registry settings across uh, into their version of the registry. So that's now done. Now, one thing that I always recommend you do before you um, click on finish is you want to run SAP Business One for the very first time just in case there are any add-ons which need to install because uh, you want those installation changes to be captured as well. Now if you go and install your add-ons later there is a little technique that you can use to um, to capture those settings and I'll show you that in a second. But what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to right click on here and I need to choose to run SAP Business One as administrator and I'll say yes and I'm just going to log on just as manager and using my standard password of manager because it's a fresh installation that we've done and I'll say OK and then the system takes me straight into SAP Business One. Now, if by chance that does not work for you, if by chance you get a, a, an error message, a red message bar along the bottom telling you if you've got an error message, or it comes up with uh, the screen to choose your SQL Server with um, garbage in that screen, one of two things. You have either haven't opened up the necessary ports on the firewall on the SQL Server, or you haven't chosen to run SAP Business One as the administrator. So as long as you've done both of those things, you'll actually be in good shape and exactly what you see here should be what you, uh, what you encounter. So that's it. My SAP Business One has run for the very first time. So I'm happy with that. So I'm now going to come in here. I'm going to click on Finish. That's done. And the next thing I want to do is I want to um, go and add SAP Business One to my list of web apps that uh, that I want to publish out. So remember we did that in our earlier session on terminal services. So I click on start, go to administrative tools and then come up here to remote desktop services and go into remote app manager. So go into my remote app manager Give that a couple of seconds to start up. So there you can see there's WordPad that I just uh, used as an example. So now we want to come up here and we want to say add a remote app program. The wizard launches. I'll say next. And you can now see there you have it. There's SAP Business One being populated into my list. I'll say next and finish. And that's it. That's now done. And in my terminal services web access web part, um, that will now automatically publish SAP Business One uh, into that web part for me but we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in one of our f f next sessions. So that's it, that's our SAP Business One installed on Terminal Services and in the next session what I'm going to do is take you through the installation of Microsoft Office 2010 on the Terminal Server and then we're going to install a couple of our add-ons.